Welcome to the newest episode of The Process of Fat Loss, where our goal is to help you understand the best way to lose fat and live a healthier life. Join us as we discuss some of the toughest and most valuable topics in health and fitness. Today, we're going to be discussing alcohol and the impact it has on fat loss. Now, you'll probably know that alcohol can have negative impacts because of its very high calories and low nutrient density. But there's another side to alcohol that's often overlooked. Um, and I know it's a huge obstacle for many of our clients and much of the population in general. And I also know Trevor's uh, pretty passionate about this topic. So I'm going to hand it over to him to get us started. All right, guys, like Nick said, I am passionate about it. I'm pretty bold on my claims when it comes to alcohol. Um, not that I'm like anti-alcohol and, and everything. It's just that I do believe that we all have very specific goals and we use this one as the biggest excuse. So one thing most of our clients at GCP love is some sort of alcohol. It's the conversation that we literally have on a daily basis. And it's one of the biggest sticking points on why our clients struggle to lose weight. And it's also the one that I get most fight back. People like, I'm not willing to give up alcohol. And it's like, man, like very bold statement that you have like this um, vice that's so strong that you're not willing to give that up, right? Like when I talk to my mom about smoking, she's like, it's like, it's hard for her to give it up. And I get it. It's a real vice, guys. It's not like an accident. It's like, oh, I just do it for fun. Like it's, if, if you're not willing to give it up, it's not social anymore. So let's be really intelligent about what we're talking about here. So um, when it comes to affecting your goals, if you talk about like, we have clients, they all want to work out. They want to get these amazing goals. And then they're like, but I won't give up this one thing that's actually intensely bad for your fitness and health in general. So we're going to go down that route on why it really is and why I'm so why I'm so bold and strong against my opinions on this. Um, and this is coming from somebody that doesn't drink alcohol, but I did drink alcohol at one point in my life, but I don't drink alcohol anymore. And like, I just really do think that people don't realize how it really affects fat loss. So let me start off with the question that's the basis for today's discussion. Why does alcohol put the brakes on fat loss? Yeah, I think this is, when I talk about this, a lot of people are kind of, I don't know if they're mind blown by it, but there's kind of like, wow, I guess I did not realize that's how alcohol exactly works. So this is always a fun one to kind of talk to people in person about. Um, so you first have to understand how the liver works and how alcohol and fat work in the liver. So fat is metabolized in our liver. So when we go to break down fat cells, we're gonna metabolize it in the liver, regardless of if there's food coming through the system or it's pulling out of our fat cells, we're gonna be metabolizing that fat inside of our liver. The thing about alcohol is we're also gonna be metabolizing or breaking down alcohol in the liver. So they're both being used inside of the same organ. The organ can only do one thing at a time. So since both fat and alcohol are processed through the liver, the liver has to make a specific choice. It has to say, I have to work on one at a time but it's always gonna go after priority number one, which is the poison, right? So alcohol is a poison. We all know that. I don't think anybody's ignorant enough to not realize that it's a poison. It's something that our body does not wanna produce. I mean, does not wanna process. It wants to get it out of the body as soon as possible because they can't do anything with it. It can turn it into some sugars. So if it turns it into sugars, um, and that's usually the sugar coming from alcohol, but we can turn it into sugars and they, they'll, then it'll take that and store it in either muscle glycogen or turn that into body fat. But from there, it literally just has to process it out of the system. 90% of it is processed through the liver. The other is going to go out through urine. It's going to go through like breathing and like ex expiration kind of variations. But most of it's going to go through the liver. So for a normal person who has a healthy liver, and the longer you've been drinking, the probably the more the less healthy your liver is. But a healthy liver, this process takes about 10 hours to process. So we only get out of a, t if we drink some alcohol, and, and that 10 hours depends on how much to total alcohol you've drank. Let's pretend like you've been drink you drank two drinks, right? So you had two drinks. This leaves only about 14 hours of the day to burn fat, which sounds like a lot. That's still like most of the day you're burning fat, right? However, it's still like 10 hours less that you have that. So let's take that uh, that drink over three nights a week. So you only drink it three nights a week, which still leaves you four nights a week that you're not drinking. That's 2,184 hours a year minimum that your body is not processing fat. That's a ton. That's a ton of calories throughout the year. Turn to body fat that could be burned that you're not burning. Imagine if you reduce that to one night a week. You only did it one night a week. You get 1,456 more hours of fat burning in one year alone. That could lead to, I don't know, exact calculations. That could lead to 10 to 15 pounds. And that's just moving into one night a week. Think about that over 10 years. And think about that five to 20 pounds of fat that has come on your body over the last 10 years. And you're not sure how it got there. You're like, I don't, no, I don't overeat. I don't eat a lot. I snack around a lot. I don't eat that bad. And I hear that a lot probably for females. Like, I don't eat that much food. But man, I drink three glasses of wine a, drink a night. Okay, so there's a bigger obstacle here than the food you intake. It's actually the other stuff you're intaking. Um, so there, that's something to think about. Like, you are, you gain, you most likely, a lot of, 
a lot of our clientele didn't just get overweight overnight. It happened over 5, 10, probably 15, 20 years. And all of a sudden, like, just don't know how this weight got on. It's just like, it's, it's called creeping obesity is the name of it, creeping obesity. And so that can happen from alcohol because look at how many less calories we're burning, or really, really like less fat we're metabolizing over that amount of time, which fat is not good. So we talk in our diet, eating fat is good. But this kind of fat is a little, like, it's not that we're, we're just not metabolizing fat that whole time, right? So it's not that we're getting excess fat in our diet. It's just we're not metabolizing fat during that time. So it's important to think about. Um, so we get people use alcohol as a stress reliever. Um, but there's so many other things you could do as stress relievers. Exercise, walking, which is another form of exercise, like bike riding, anything of that nature, swimming. Um, playing games with friends. It's like card games, going outside and doing things with friends and family. Talking to a, just talking to a spouse. You don't have to talk to a spouse, Andrew Gaffo. You can talk to a spouse and just hang out, right? Um, technology is limitless, right? There's tons of TV and things of that nature, which sometimes lead to more drinking. But like in terms of that, there's tons of different technologies out there to keep you busy and focused. There's just so many other things that are stress relievers. Um, not saying that you have to be like me and never drink, but limiting your alcohol can have a huge benefit over time. Some other important information that um, I've read about alcohol um, is it not only stops stop fat oxidation, but it also forces the body to make new fat in the liver, right? So as part of like fatty liver disease, right? So you can get fatty liver disease from this. We have a, a toxic liver pretty much. And so it can actually create more fat inside of the liver by doing this, which is not, a, not good in that process if we're making it from alcohol. Along with um, this, alcohol metabolites are said to uh, interfere and stop the process of actually pulling fat out of the cell. So it's like stop access to stored fats. And that's not good because especially if we're in a ketotonic, ketonic state, so our goal is to be ketonic. If you're drinking too much, you're probably not in a ketonic state. But if you're on a keto-based diet, the idea is like that, we want to become fat adapted so that we can pull fat out of those cells. That's, that's why we do all that hard work of staying away from carbs. So we can pull the fat out of cells. Well, now by drinking alcohol, even if it's a small amount that fits inside your calorie range, we're actually making it harder for our body to access that stored fat. So I just don't understand why the value of that is worth over worth the value of all this other benefits you get from not drinking alcohol. Um, so this just hurts your ability to lose fat in all the whole process from the fact that it just slams on those brakes, right? It slams on the brakes at the very beginning by not letting your, your liver do what it's supposed to do. And then it has all these little chain of uh, chain reactions, not to mention like most people don't sleep as well with it, right? So if you're not sleeping very well by drinking alcohol, that doesn't help you either. So that's going to lead to less fat loss. Right, so we, we know like the big reasons, as we talked about why we kind of want to avoid alcohol, obviously the calories that it, provide, that it uh, adds on, as well as the negative effect it puts on fat, fat breakdown. But what are some other negative effects of alcohol that we might not usually notice or kind of forget about? So these other, these next ones, like there's, there, there's, a, there's a humongous list of alcohol things I could list too, but these are going to be mainly just like truly affect just, affect just fat loss, right? So the first one is overeating. So when we drink, we have a tendency to have less focus on the food that we're eating, and this can lead to over-consuming calories. Especially as you drink, you care, the more you drink, the less and less you care about what your current goals are. You lose track of how much food you've actually eaten, and, your calor and you are drinking calories the entire time. So you're just completely lost on how much calorie intake you're having during this time. Um, even if you're drinking, uh, even if you're not drinking a ton, um, the change of inhibition leads to less desire to stay focused overall. Um, so overeating is a big issue that comes with drinking too much or just drinking in general, I don't even know that's too much. And then eating off plan. Um, same as overeating, you start to lose focus on your goal. Salty things are craved more as you, as your level of dehydration increases. The sweets you didn't plan on eating are now more enticing at the end of dinner and your ability to say no has slightly decreased. So your willpower is not in your corner anymore. You don't have as much control over willpower as you do when you don't have a level of alkaline. And I'm not saying, we're not, everything we're talking about, I'm not talking about people getting plastered every single night. Like that's not even what we're talking about. I'm, I'm realistically looking at people not doing that. I'm looking at people just having one to two glasses a night. That's everything we're talking about is just that one to two glasses. We're not talking about over drinking. We're talking about one to two glasses a week. Um, also, if you came in with a certain carb level, like let's say you're in keto and I can only have 50 grams of carbs a day, it's going to be really hard to stay underneath that carb thing if you're over drinking or if you're drinking in general because you first, most people aren't calculating the carbs that they actually have in the alcohol, so that's step one. But step two is now they're naturally going to have a tendency to want to overeat carbs because they have a saltier desire and they're not going to be able to overcome some of that stuff and they won't have the same inhibitions that they had before. 
Okay, so what is one step that our listeners can take to kind of put these things into action and make this change in their life? Our biggest tip for every single client, we are completely realistic that we're not going to get people to stop drinking, and that's fine. Like That was never the goal. Um, the goal is strictly for fat loss. So could we take that three nights a week of drinking to one night a week, right? One day a week, we're going to do that. So when we look at it, it's like I, a, a client has a, a glass of wine three nights a week because they're stressed from work. Could we take that to like one night a week on maybe a day when they can be more active so that we can get away with the fact, that, okay, we only affect that fat loss um, one time. So um, in society, it's definitely a status symbol and we understand that it's harder to not drink and handle the social pressure, which kind of blows my mind a little bit because we are adults. Like we're at that point that we peer pressure should not affect us in that way, but it really does when it comes to alcohol. Um, and, you know, I always say like to your so-called friends are really not that good of friends if they're going to pressure you into to, to drinking alcohol. Like even as adults, like that's still pretty crazy, but people have it. And some of you guys that I'm talking to are ones that do it to other people. So stop doing it to other people. Um, so, but try to, uh, so, so keeping it to a minimal minimum while you're drinking is really important. And just make sure you're really focusing on the fact that like your goals are very important. If you're really chasing fat loss and you're really wanting a specific amount of time, like, Hey, I want to be ready for a wedding in three months, or I have, we're going on vacation in six weeks and I want to be, I want to look good. You need to just give up alcohol for that time frame, Right. And if you can't give up alcohol for six weeks, like there's other issues that we we don't current, we don't deal with honestly, but like that's kind of stuff. It's like that kind of, you have to be very conscious about the fact that you can, can't go six weeks without drinking alcohol. You have a problem, and you really need to think about what that problem is and, and find help for those kind of problems. But you know, outside of that, like if you're you're really trying to chase those goals, get laser dialed in. But if the goal is long, if it's just long term health, one time a week of drinking is no big problem at all. There are other stress relievers out there that are healthier for you and make you feel better. So maybe those are better to choose. But one time a week is not going to hurt you. Thanks for sharing kind of about the hidden side of alcohol and kind of the negative effects it can have on fat loss. Uh, it's something that's often completely forgotten and overlooked, so it's, it's important to, I think, share with you guys listening about the, the kind of the side of that people don't often think about. I hope all you guys listening can take something away from what we talked about today and implement some of the action steps that we talked about today in your life and kind of just make, start making these changes towards, uh, towards reaching your goals and putting that as a priority in your life. I hope you guys all enjoyed the discussion of today's topic. Remember, the best time to start living healthier is today, so make sure to take action in your life right away. If you have enjoyed our episode today, please give us a review. You can do that on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or YouTube if you give us a like. Uh, and be sure to subscribe so you catch our new episodes and follow us on social media so you stay up to date on new episodes that we're releasing, new topics, and some of the other stuff that we post on there as well. If you have any ideas for new topics that you want to talk about or anything uh, that you want to hear us discuss, you can either send us an email, send us a, uh, a message on social media, or leave a comment on YouTube, and we'll uh, try to talk about some of the topics that you guys suggest for us. Thanks again for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you'll join us for the next episode of The Process of Fat Loss. And guys, don't forget about our Ignite program, which is a 10-day fat loss program that really gets people ignited, their metabolism uh, ignited. So something that we have offering at all times. So go ahead and check that program out. Reach out to us if you have any questions on the Ignite program as we can get you jump-started into your future.